Chicanos and Chicanas and Native Americans in STEM. Um, and here they are to present, um, you know, potentially. Yeah, hold on. We haven't started any like. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Part of the so we can take oh. like, the whole attendance. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to give you the introduction because I'm already halfway done. So anyway, they are here to present for the conference whenever we get to that section. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm so sorry, guys. We, they have to do a whole part of life. All right, yeah. Thank you. I apologize. We started a little late. Sorry. Okay. Kenny, are we recording? Yep. Thank you, Kenny. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this is our official meeting for Friday, October 23rd. We have already read the uh, statement. Let's start by taking attendance. Gabe, I'll start with you. Gabe Trujillo, present. <laughs> Tom, here. Uh, Paul Nelson, present. Anthony Rathbun, present. Danny Palacios, present. Chris Senior, present. Right, Michael Warner, present. Ree Barco, present. Naomi, present. Will, present. Alejandro uh, Casillas, present. Thanks, guys. Wait. And oh, John, John, present. Oh, my bad. John. No one else is present. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, we have already been through the group norms this morning. So we are going to, uh, we agreed to move our uh, boarding committee announcements as written statements. They are in the agenda and the agenda and therefore on the record. Um, okay, let's go through. Wait, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yes, please. So, and then for the council, um, the, how this is going to work is they're going to give their presentation. They have 15 minutes to do so, and about five minutes for questions. Then y'all are free to leave, of course, um, or stay if you like. Um, this will not be voted on this week. Um, this will be approved next week. So, as written in our constitution, um, to release funds to student org, it's a two thirds vote next week. So, um, and we will have private discussion this next week as well. So, yes. Okay. okay. So, I do see that okay i see that all oh, the whole the food pantry resolution it is first so will you be okay with moving it to allow our guest speakers oh it's a bird to that so I'm, I'm not going to really issue with it though it's been so valid but that because I, I support this effort Beautiful. Okay. Okay. I thought it was not first because we had that 130 time slot already yeah. allotted to it so right. that's already there okay yeah, so we don't have to change on that. Okay. Well, let's vote on the agenda. I move to approve the schedule. I second. Okay, everybody who agrees that night. Aye. 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 Any, any objections? Any abstentions? Beautiful. Okay. Naomi, you already shared what happened. Let's give the floor to. Oh, hold on. It's, I thought I. Thank, what you, for Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. Um, sorry, one second. You can blame me. Listen, listen, give me some grace, give me some grace. There we go. Okay. Listen, just let it be. So is yours. All right. So um, we're going to kind of also, um, in an attempt to respect your time and our time as well, we're going to give a general outline of the conference and then we're just gonna have it be very casual y'all can ask questions as we go through things um and that way we don't take uh, more, 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 uh the time a lot i don't know how to make this to where it doesn't just like speed through it just can you just click it right no? and then it just like it continues to like go fast through it though or well, use your use your, your left keys do you just like hold on to them please please i know that's what i'm saying though it's like it will time out so, yeah. So, okay. If it times out, just pay no mind. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Sorry. Sorry. Thank we, you. we are uh, the Sacramento's chapter at, at MSU Denver. Um, I am the president. Victor Lingus, thank you for having me here today. I'm the vice president. Thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, so, Sacramento stands for the Society of, Advan of Advancement of Native American and Chicano Students um, in STEM. Uh, this year, we are having a national conference in Portland, Oregon, and we are looking for funding uh, for this conference. Okay. Yeah, um, the conference. Uh, so basically, our mission is to foster the success of Chicano, Hispanic, and Native Americans in STEM. Um, and one of the ways we approach that is through the national conference. The national conference provides students 
uh, professional development paths that provides them opportunities for research. There's a career expo there. Um, we will actually be hosting on October 20th um, with collabor in collaboration with Lockheed Martin, a workshop to prepare all our members to maximize their um, efforts at the Career Expo. So this is a travel opportunity that we are offering uh, Metro students. Last year, we were able to take four students to the national conference that was hosted in Puerto Rico. Um, I was one of the lucky few, so it was Naomi. Uh, we both got to experience a uh, once in a lifetime trip um, where we got to uh, network with a lot of uh, graduate uh, professors and uh, you know, be able to uh, see what's out there as a STEM student. So um, I think that this opportunity is something that um, really pushed us to um, reestablish the SACNIS organization here at Metro uh, in order to expand um, the amount of people that we're able to take. So like I said before, um, there is a lack of um, kind of a lack of conversation um, when it comes to STEM students from underrepresented minorities. Um, and so we are trying to uh, step up and address that. Um, so our academic goals are obviously to, to support our students um, uh, and enhancing diverse thinking. Um, so like I said, support our students, give them a platform where um they are okay to not just like go through the steps but like bring themselves fully with their with all their identity um and have them realize that the stem um field is somewhere where they belong so personally i am a biochemistry major and a lot of the times i have felt that because metro is a smaller school um we aren't really doing real science, um, but this conference um, really exposed us to all the undergraduate research that is being done across the nation. And, you know, I I might be a little biased, but I have to say that we our uh, science education is either up to par or above par uh, from what I've seen uh, across the nation. And I was only able to understand this through the uh, SACNIS National Conference. And, yeah. So um, I know MSU, um, one of their missions is to provide uh, like an affordable um, and uh, like very well developed um, education. Um, and this, um, this clearly aligns with the conference um, and its mission as well. Um, we are trying to provide the support for 14 students um, to have the, an enriched um, educational experience. Sorry guys. <laughs> uh, so what we're asking for, um, the proposed total that we're asking for is 2,000. Um, oh, sorry, you can't see it at the yeah, bottom because of the thing. $215. Um, this will cover the expense for one student who um, we had the unfortunate event that because she is a, a psychology major, MSU doesn't recognize psychology as a STEM field. There are other institutions that do um, classify it as a science. But um, so because of that, the way that our funding work through PACE is that they aren't able to support that or it would other compromise the funds for the rest of the students. Yeah. Um, and we're also asking for some, please. yeah, go for it, please. Awesome, I'm actually the only student on this trip that you're trying to send or is there? I mean, we're trying to support all 14 students. So we've been through student travel. Um, we've been in contact with the Office of Scholarship Support and Retention. They've been really um, amicable and they provided us some funding 
we've reached out to CMEI. So we are taking all initiatives possible to, to make this trip happen for all 14 students without them having to pay a penny. So most of the funding uh, for this trip has been provided through Bill, which is a scholarship designated for uh, STEM students. Uh, but like Hugo said earlier, uh, because psychology is not necessarily a uh, STEM uh, major, uh, they aren't able to provide any fun for this. Yeah. Um, and then we're also asking for some food expense. Um, at the conference, there are some covered, um, like I believe there's a night where they do cover the dinner or they provide a dinner for um, every participant at the conference, but all other times um, we would have to uh, pay from our pocket for it. What's happening here? There you go, sorry. Um, Pay no attention. This is kind of <laughs> so. At this point, um, if if you have questions, we can just open it and have a conversation. Thank you. Uh, your presentation, guys. I'm excited about this uh, this trip and that we're sending such a big group. I think that's a really strong um, organizational effort by you guys. Um, I want to ask how 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 you plan to bring back what you learned. You know, Absolutely. maybe maybe you went over that and I missed it, but no. Um, if you could share a little bit about that, and I'm excited to hear. So initially, um, like I said previously, Seconds was recently restarted as an organization, and that was because we sent four students to the national conference. Uh, through that, we did learn a lot of professional development that has helped us establish the organization again. Um, that's including public speaking. I am terrified of this. It's one of the key points that Sackness uh, has allowed me to uh, expand on as a person. And I hope that uh, me being up here will uh, encourage the rest of our Sackness members to continue to put themselves in uncomfortable situations. Yes. So, cool. um, I would like to add on that as, as an organization, um, the more people are exposed. To, to this environment where um, it really, I, I didn't go to Sakmas, but I did go to the Haku conference last year. Um, and just the impact that an individual has from seeing like-minded people um, that represent where they would like to be in their careers yeah. is massive. Um, and that propels me to uh, join Luis, um, Naomi, and our other officers to reinstate SACMAS here at uh, MSU Denver. Um, I believe these efforts will propel other students to, to bring on uh, more of a sense of a community within the STEM fields here. Um, I know the engineering department is also a place where um, that sort of discussion is, is hasn't been emphasized, um, but through Space Tech Scholars, it's uh, slowly coming up. And um, I actually had a really good conversation with Loretta Lemata, who was the program director for Space Tech Scholars, and Diana, I'm blanking on her last name, but she is um, the camp uh, director, I believe. Um, and so I hope that um, we had a conversation about also bringing SHPE, which is a uh, Society for Hispanic Special engineers. Um, special engineers um on campus um, and the more people will get exposed to these type of things the more community will be built um and i believe ultimately it's definitely helped me and everyone i've gone to um, so country similar sorry. uh one of the key points that was pointed out to me uh, by a bunch of uh, professionals at the seconds conference is that science is slowly changing. It's no longer competitive. It's more of a collaborative field. And we saw that a lot with the COVID uh, pandemic, where scientists were freely able to exchange information and such, which got us uh, vaccines at a record time. Um, and through segments, we are able to network with these professionals who are making these huge impacts. Um, one of the First things we did as a Sacramento uh, organization was reach out to the CU Anschutz uh, 
Sessions chapters. Um, we have been planning on collaborating, just if timing hasn't worked out quite yet, but um, they have basically taken us under their wing, helped us with their, uh, with our um, constitution. This, mm -hmm. this is the process of bringing nice. yeah. and, you know, having them as a networking opportunity, especially at such a huge campus. Uh, it really brings both uh, chapters closer together and makes us both stronger. I would like to make a quick point for you guys to also consider this as their advocate. Um, just visit the website, visit the Sackness chapter website. Um, just take a look at it. It'll clearly state that this is the largest conference in the nation and people come from all over. It's not just, um, you know, Hispanics and Native Americans, like you get indigenous from all over the world that come to this conference to expose themselves and create a sense of community. And also to add in to Paul's um, question, they provide you with so many different things to bring back when it comes to PDF documents, Google documents, pamphlets of grad school opportunities, research opportunities. Um, the Peace Corps will be there, like just an abundance of opportunities that you can literally take in your hands and or online and bring back. And they also have an app that you can store all this on so it is paperless as well that you can share with everybody at your university. Does anybody else connect? Well, we think to kind of clarify Paul's question as well. I know with student travel, you have to fill out a section on like how you're bringing it back to campus, whether that's like presenting to a class or something. Yeah. Um, so more like what did you put on that set of that application? Yeah, like I said, so we have been trying to build relationships with um, places like CU Anschwitz, places like Camp here at school, places like Space Tech Scholars. Um, we we have an event set up with Space Tech and Camp. Um, it's in the works right now, but it'll be an event where they have their cohorts and we come in after our conference um, and we kind of share what uh, SACMAS has provided us. Nice. I think you guys are also presenting the RMF and welcome to their dinner yes, presentation. Yes, their dinner presentation in the spring. Okay. 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 Does anybody else have anything? This is truly an amazing thing yes. for your efforts, your leadership, particularly the, the opportunity that you're opening not only for the university, but for those who probably don't see or don't believe they're seeing. Thank you. Uh, you guys are welcome to stay and listen to the rest of the meeting. Um, we'll vote on it. Yeah, we will vote on it next week. And we'll, we'll have the email let you know. We'll send you an email. Thank you, guys. You did a good job on your public speaking. Yeah. 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 Good job. Good job, guys. Go. Thank you. Ooh. Okay. We are transitioning to our next uh, business item, which is the group pantry resolution. Um, no. Okay, sorry. Just clear my throat. Something. I know there were some um, amendments to your original resolution. Would you like to tell us about? Yeah, I can. You know, we can. I think we can honestly, personally, actually, we can spare the reading whole thing um, and just describe what's been changed. The only thing that's been changed, everybody, is on page three, um, the first therefore. And so now, instead of saying that the funding will be sourced from the unallocated portion of our budget, uh, it says the following. So the Student Access Council will make an initial transfer of 15000 to the Roadrunner Food Pantry sourced through the following budgetary reallocations. One, a reduction of $5,000 from the ER events fund, originally allocated $30,000. Two, a reduction of $5,000 from the office fund, originally allocated $10,000. And three, a transfer of $5,000 from the rainy day fund, originally allocated $9,000. Now, I have thought and stuff to say, but that's pretty good. This is your bill. Do you have anything else to add? No? Okay. Um, I am going to start the seven minute timer. It will go about seven minutes and one can motion to uh, extend. Otherwise, we will vote. Uh, okay, I started. Now, I have so far, I have. Oh, let me get my sack for it. Okay, so far, I have Mike and Paul. Mike. 
So um, I have a question and some comments on, on this. So uh, the first, therefore, that specifies fifteen thousand dollars, and then the second, therefore, specifies this ends up being twenty thousand dollars total. Wow. Uh, a reduction of five thousand from PR fund, the reduction of five thousand from the office fund, a reduction of five thousand from the RHA fund, and then in addition to that, as you can see, I'll get a five thousand donation on October sixteenth, and we're making sure the did it. So from my get from that, the bill has been increased from fifteen to twenty thousand. That's question I have for, for a second. And then um, I have some other questions about some of the other uh, windows or metaphors. Um, I, I mean, I think I've told everyone this. I do like the beef. What? Yeah. I'm just talking to the trade. Okay. So, yes, um, I have some things issued like with the demand university recognize issue hand request seeking funds. I'd like that maybe to maybe be a little more specific with some kind of action items on there, like what are we going to do to do that? I think that's a little too vague. Uh, and then um, promote SNAP benefits and road rent food pantry, uh, road rent, road rent earth, food pantry resources at NC Denver as well. So I think that would be a little more specific on that, uh, that as well. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 I, I feel like that's just going to go underneath the weight set as we can put some action items there. Like, hey, we're going to do this, this, this. If it's something about running SNAP, I'm pretty sure Pierre would love to do this SNAP thing about that. I mean, I think that's a pretty uh, Exactly. And then I'm going to do that as well. And then that's where right. so and then the satellite locations of Rowdy's Corner will remain a focus. Then you can never see the or so you in Rowdy's Corner. I don't know what that means. There's two satellite locations and one's the honest house and another one's Kita. Are we gonna be supporting them anyway? Do they know what you're talking about? Um, I used to be kind of a, I used to be a student org that's in the honors house. Um, what do you what do you plan on doing with that then? I have all first so, one. Those are my questions. I think Mike for raising the same concern that the 5,000 puts it to the 20. If we have the original 15, that wasn't our intention. That was an oversight from this edit. And so Thomas and I have discussed and we'll be striking this portion of the, of the resolution. So that's the one that immediately follows the first one. So we're back down to 15, but that 15 will be one more time. Um, the rest, I, you know, I, I believe I've actually addressed many of these concerns. Um, I don't think a lot of the problems being raised are actually problems. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that we'd rather repeat on this for too long. Um, I want to draw a critical distinction between what some may call student advocacy and what it means to really advocate for the student body. Um, tabling events, networking opportunities, um, things like Constitution, they have their place in building a sense of community, disseminating information. I don't want to discount the work that people do. But we need to be honest, these, are, these initiatives are surface level at best when it comes to tackling the serious life altering challenges that many of our students face, such as food insecurity. Uh, how much advocacy are we really doing when we're handing out pamphlets while students are handing over their dreams because they can't afford their next meal? What's the value of a Constitution Day event for a student who's more worried about where they'll get their next meal than, what, than about the intricacies of the Constitution? We risk losing focus on what truly matters, and I believe we have. I think these events, while we're, well intentioned, can serve as distractions that, that allow us to pat ourselves on the back and feel like we're making a difference when in reality we're just trying to scratch the surface. We need to not forget that we're not just event planners or people discussing ideas. We're elected representatives of the student body. Our role isn't just to make students feel good for a few hours or anything like that. Our role is to improve their lives in meaningful, long-lasting ways, to create conditions in which they cannot just survive but thrive. When we consider that food insecurity has a direct and detrimental impact on student performance, retention, and overall well-being, it becomes clear this issue should be at the very top of our agenda. And that's why Thomas and I have been so hard on this issue. We have a duty to take meaningful action, and that's got to start with recognizing the emergency at hand with allocating these necessary resources to Rowdy's Corner. We've shown that we don't even like, we have more than enough money to make this happen. Um, we've made that clear with our most recent amendment. And it's about putting our money where our mouth is, or rather uh, where the mouths of hungry students are. Uh, and this is so tied to our university's future and well-being, enrollment and everything else, that to ignore it is to just close our eyes to what's actually happening. One in three students are food insecure. One in three students are food insecure. One in three students are food insecure. You need to be thinking about that every day. And you need to be thinking about the students who are suffering under that condition and what that means to their enrollment and their retention, our funding, which is immediately tied to retention. Um, and so this is a long lasting change we can make. Uh, this has, we need to set a precedent on how, these, how the student government behaves when a big problem hits students. One in three students being food insecure is a big problem, whether you agree with me or not on that. And if we show that the student government will drag its feet and not act swiftly to 
try and address those concerns, very real material concerns, uh, we've made our positions clear. I'm going to make my position clear on how I stand on that question in advancing this issue. Um, how do we expect these students to su succeed academically um, when they're struggling with their most basic needs? Um, they can't focus in class when they're hungry, when they're choosing between buying a textbook or buying groceries. And those are decisions that students are making. So they need to, like, 15,000 is too little, but it's what I want to advance today. And that's all I'll say. I'm motion we extend the time by seven minutes. I um, well, I second that motion. I just have one. Okay. Uh, we vote on expanding the time, of extending the time for seven minutes. Okay, everybody who agrees to extend the time for seven minutes, say aye. Uh, aye. Everybody who objects, oh, anybody who objects? Any abstentions? Thank you. I need to run out. Go ahead, and then I will. This is a question for both you and uh, Thomas and also Alejandro. Um, my biggest concern with the bill is not knowing where exactly we are in the budget, lying with the budget and cutting from the budget and what percentages. If I knew what the budget looked like and I keep hearing different things, I would feel a lot better about the, like voting 100% yes and I have really no issues with like the reductions here as food insecurity in my humble opinion is definitely more important than an office fund but I have concerns with not knowing where the budget is currently and that is my greatest fear that if we ended up passing this giving 15k now hindering other uh, our ability to help out in the future. So that is just my concern with this bill. That's all I have to say. Anyone have a direct? Oh. Um, it's my understanding that uh, there hasn't been a ton of information about these budget changes. Mm -hmm. And insofar as we don't have information, we shouldn't use any of that speculation to inform our decision making around the process. Uh, I think with the figures that I've seen, there's no reason to believe that we can't make this happen. I, I, I share your concern for having a, a, a budget that works. Um, I, I, I just don't think that this is uh, in peril plans. Thank you. Well, I, have my oh, my I actually have a question for our budget chair, Alejandro. Have, have these two come to you at all in any sort of sense to even kind of like talk to you about the budget? Because this is a big, this is almost 20% of our budget they're asking to give away. Have they consulted with you or the budget committee in any sort of way? Um, the only one who had really reached out was Thomas. Um, he basically just was asking what the numbers look like right now. And I just basically told him that we're still trying to figure that out because we're still trying to figure out whether there are more cuts coming in or what we have right now set. So. On order. Let me address the chair when discussing other councils. I agree. Let's just do that real quick. What's up, Mike? Real quick, it's fine, and I have to. Address the chair. Yeah. Well, I'd ask the question of our budget change. I, I think we I all understand. Okay, point of order. Let's let's just clarify this real quick. You make a comment. You you make an answer, and then just let me clarify that I have this. Point oh, That's all I'm asking. Thank, Thank you. you. Well. I have no comments. Uh, that was my question. I wanted to ask the, the budget chair what, what's going on personally. Yeah. We have uh, four minutes and 14 seconds. Would anybody like to say anything else about this? So, three, please. I just have a, um, I don't know if it's a question or a statement, maybe. That's yeah. okay. Um, when do we have an idea of when we expect to know what the final cut to the budget is? Um, yes. Thank you for your question. I have Dr. Brock with the answers. Thank God. <laughs> well, I don't know that I have the answers. What I can tell you is that the budget allocation process this year has not been clear across the university, specifically with student fee funded um, areas, and I oversee several of them. <laughs> And so, um, so I don't have like a quick answer to your question, but what I can tell you is a lot of the allocations are inaccurate, or at least from based on what our understanding is of enrollment and where our members have 
R yeah. from what was projected and 3% down in the spring. And so there are discrepancies there, and I'm finding this across the areas that I oversee. And so we're doing what we can to try to sort through that and navigate that with the budget office. I don't know when that's going to be sorted. What I can also tell you is that um, there's a very distinct difference between budget, annual budget allocation, and roll forward, right? And so roll forward is the remainder of your budget or anyone's budget is with the student fee allocated budget that is able to carry forward from the previous year. And so that number is probably accurate. We'll probably have to triple check that as well. But um, that number um, is based on the spending that happened last year, right? And then what was left over. So the rainy day fund, as you refer to call, would be this year's potential roll forward for next year, right? And so that's that roll forward and carry forward is a privilege that mm -hmm. student fee funded programs have or centers have in their ability to roll that funding forward in general fund budgets, which my budget is a general fund budget, we don't get to roll forward those funds. That money just goes away at the end of the year if you don't spend it. Right. So um, that's just is it 101 like understanding of how the student fee funded budgets and general fund budgets are a little bit different? Yeah. What I will also share that I can't share explicit detail on yet, but I will tell you that the university is well aware of the concerns that have been raised by students and others around the food pantry and security. And um, we are working towards a long term sustainable solution, but I can't share the details of what that will be but it will be forthcoming in the next few months, and it is not a band-aid. It is a long-term sustainable solution where there will be resources mm -hmm. um, and shifting um, going on with Bradley's Corner in uh, different ways that will allow for there to be um, more um, support and resources long-term. But I can't share what those are at this point because we're still working out the details for the exact reasons that I'm telling you because we're still sorting through the budgets and funding and all of those things that may be high on the priority for senior leadership, including myself, Taylor, and Dr. Simpson. So that's what I can share. That's it. And I know it took up a lot of time. Sorry. I appreciate it. Um, so I think this is important, right? Like we want to tackle food insecurity. I think that's collect. I think I just want to establish with our new norms um, that collectively we all want this to happen. Right? Am I right here? Yeah. We, we all want to like combat food insecurity. Okay. Now, collectively, I think we all kind of have some like mixed feelings about this. So I think on one side, I'm seeing that like you guys want this done today, which is completely understandable. We don't want our students to start today or tomorrow or, you know, the day after. And we also <laughs> don't want to potentially put our other students who need other funding at risk either. So I see that we're, I see where we're divided. And I think that we need to come up with maybe like a compromise. And I'm not saying a compromise is in that it doesn't pass at all. I'm saying a compromise is it does get passed today, but circumstantially. So, for instance, my suggestion here is that we. Wait, I, oh, okay. Oh, right, right. Okay. So, I'm just going to get on this motion for four minutes. A second. Keep going. Yes. Let's vote. Everybody who agrees to that. Okay. What? Paul? I was going to say, can we do seven? I don't okay. want to do this again. Yeah. I second that. Yeah, I second that. Okay, let's vote for seven. Aye. Thank you. Well, Look, we have 15 minutes left in our meeting. Well, we just voted to extend. Yeah. Oh, to, to extend the meeting? Well, well we're to, to extend the discussion. Okay, discussion. We're we were extended to um, extend the discussion. Hold on. I have Alejandro. What's up? Um. Well, uh, actually, no. I'll just say it. Go ahead. Okay. okay. So, um, in the agenda, we still have a tabling resolution. Would you guys be willing to table that agenda? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
picture of what our budget looks like. We'll give them the rest at whatever you guys said. Cause I don't think it's a problem of giving them the money. I think it's just the timing of which we give it to them, which sucks, but at least we give them that big chunk now and then we can give them the rest later. Um, I I like that idea. I also think that in the second part, we should um, have a way yeah, for yeah. Uh, action, action items about what the, like the, we're going to do to talk to admin about this. Alejandro, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, I was going to say, I don't agree with the rainy day funds. Those are the funds that I don't want to touch. So we can definitely talk about a different um, uh, category of funds that we can use. And I, I normally had like an idea because I don't feel comfortable giving them the full 15 grand that you guys are asking for. I think it would be a little more safer to go about it monthly to make sure that they get those fundings for the food essentially. So yeah, something in the middle. But wait, what, wait, well, okay. you say 30 more seconds, that wasn't seven minutes. We were not talking about it well, for seven because minutes. you said let me you said let me just finish this compromise so we ended yeah up just on my no no just on my side okay well, well, seven minutes was voted on yeah seven minutes was voted on four minutes okay four minutes was voted on here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do seven four more seconds. minutes uh since we already have tables if i could uh four minutes pass oh. seven minutes pass i i do not appreciate the way in which my concern for the way we run our meeting is for you I, I, I only care about bringing this up because it's important that we all understand how the meeting is going. So no one's confused. I'm not trying to get one over on anybody. So please. Okay. And that, let's just stop it. And I it's asked you for the thing. Okay, stop. Stop. Please. Right. I, we did four minutes, and then in the middle of voting for four minutes, you asked for a seven-minute extension. So that's where the confusion is at. That's how it happens. So if we could just, I'm gonna do seven more minutes of the discussion, and then since we have agreed to table the next resolution, thank you. Okay, here we go with seven more minutes. Well, um, I, I just want to give Naomi. Oh, yes. So I think that's a, a good one. So it would be a friendly amendment then if you guys would be willing to cut it in half now and then half later um, with Alejandro's potential like budget cuts. Um, don't touch the rainy day funds. That's it. So maybe we could allocate it from a different. Place. That, that's my friendly amendment, but still vote on it today to get half of it passed. And then when we get a clear picture of the budget, we could do the other half. Or not. Cool. Um, and uh, Tom, I just come for a moment. Um, and um, I appreciate the friendly nature in which you offer the amendment. I do think that it like really harms uh, the capacity for this amendment to meet the need that it needs to meet. Mm -hmm. And I, I would not accept it as friendly. And um, and some of the other ideas about adding on to the bottom, if you're also thinking about adding a friendly amendment, I wanted to just address that. I think those ideas are fine. I just think there should be another resolution. I think this is a perfectly good piece of business to be voted on. I um, just wanted to say I agree with the half, and I feel that this resolution should not dictate from which funds the money is allocated. Mike. Also, just point of clarification, because this is touching our budget, it needs a two-third majority pass change in budget. So just putting that there. Paul. This is a resolution under our bylaws. It takes a simple majority to pass a resolution. Right. So two thirds is an artificial, like this is a weaponization of Robert's rules. When we talk about not letting Robert rule, we need to challenge that because you know the idea that you would need two thirds to pass a simple resolution is erroneous. I want to challenge that. Mike. So very clearly, it says we need two thirds to change our budget. This 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 resolution. In nature is changing our budget. I mean, our budget that we passed two weeks ago passed the end. Yeah, I vote for it. Yeah, I read it when I two wrote it. Unanimously. So this is changing that. That this is inherently changing that budget that we passed. So your resolution. I mean, you could call it amendments resolution. Resolution nothing. It's rules to constitute. Which you voted for as well. I have three, and I'm not clear. So just clarification for clarification. If we we either vote yes as this resolution stands, and if we want to alter the amount or anything else about the from what pot this comes from, this it's a no. Is that correct? I I don't want to change the fifteenth. Yeah. If you vote no, you're voting no, you can come back every round. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. If, it, if, come back if, if it's dies, then we can be a on it. Um I don't want to wait a week to clarify through our constitution that this needs a simple majority. 
I would encourage everybody to familiarize yourself with our, our constitution. It actually lays out how we would process this and this kind of difference we're finding ourselves at. And so I just, I, I want to assure you that this does not require two thirds and I would hate to wait a week to show you all that that's the case. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that I'm understanding your guys' position on this. Are you entirely opposed to adopting any friendly amendments about not necessarily the anomaly, but what the point is? Um, so I, I want to say this much. When, when Thomas and I brought this originally, people had problems that it was coming from the unallocated. They said, no, you need to specify where that's coming from. Now that we've done just that, people are telling us, oh, the problem is you're specifying where it's coming from. So I question the legitimacy of this concern. I think the fact that we know the money is there and now that we're specifying where it's coming from means this is a possible thing moving forward. I think this is a, uh, I don't think this is a concern that ought to impede the passage of this resolution. This most important piece of business for the students on this campus. Well, my just, to respond to Paul, I think the issue is we don't actually 100% know where this money is at. That's the biggest issue. So us believing that we know is just, that's that's all we gotta say. Okay, here's my very clear issue, which I'm gonna be able to address, but I'll talk to the chair about it soon. My issue is the complete lack of collaboration on this. Like in the beginning, I have some questions of like, how are we going to plan this? Um, what are we going to do? What is the next steps of this plan? My next thing is, I mean, these are all just statements. My problem with a lot of stuff here last year is statements are nowhere. They went nowhere, they didn't go. I mean, I don't even, I'd reckon say Mr. Hans came a lot of quite frankly. And I, when I mentioned like a snoop, like a snap event, it's like, oh, the fact that I just hang out with my hands play is just, I find me. But I was told that, like, that's not an advocacy. Like, this is, like, I mean, I find it completely ridiculous. The lack of okay, it. thank you. We are going to talk about the bill. We are not going to talk about the way we advocate for each other. Mm -hmm. I have comments. I do have Alejandro on the stack. And then I have Paul, I have Tom, and then I have Tom. So I was just going to say, um, I do think it's a little wild. I mean, again, I appreciate how driven you guys are with this, but, but how many, um, meetings have we had that and how many of you guys have been present of course you guys are not necessarily in the loop as to what we were discussing in that meeting so maybe you guys aren't understanding where our point of view is coming from um so one thing I do um I kind of want to just ask the question instead of motion if you guys already want to vote on this or not and yeah okay I have uh, oh. uh, we remain committed to passing this resolution um I believe that um, a lot of the, there's an underlying premise in this budget uncertainty conversation that um, like our advisors, have, oh, well, our, our advisor Dr. Brown has spoken to me about dispelling the <laughs> notion that and you can laugh. I don't no, know who's inappropriate. Laughing, but, no order. Uh, well, I will speak as I want to speak here, and I'm going to continue and say that like just as you can assert that oh where's the money coming from? I don't think it's necessarily fair to say that in the absence of any numbers, data, or anything that would like back up the assertions that are being made about us not having the money, that we should assume that we don't have it or that we do have it. Clearly, we have enough money to pay ourselves. We have enough money to buy 180 watermelons, which is a good thing. We had enough money to fund a Constitution Day, and we didn't blink. Uh, we can fund this. Uh, there's a lot of concerns about the budget here, but the money's there, you know, and we can solve these problems um, later. I think that what you're talking about here, we're inventing problems that aren't here in the resolution. Uh, oh. That's a question. Go ahead. Motion that we fill on this resolution. Second. Okay. You're voting on the resolution of granting the $15,000. I'm going to do this one by one as I don't want to be counting. That's like last time. So, Alejandro? I vote no. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I. Are we yes, no, or abstain? When you say for this one. when we abstain, though, does that it counts as neither, right? Like you're not giving it away as a yes or a no. 
Yes. Okay. Well, and that lowers like the, like the threshold of of uh, two thirds. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, unfortunately, until there's like a little bit more negotiation on this, I think they on the abstain. Yeah. Okay. After much thought, adding words, I'm gonna vote yes. Yeah. Kristen. Uh, yes. Um. Yes. Okay. Abstain. I'm going to abstain. John. John. Yes. We have a, uh, there are three notes, four yeses, five abstentions. Reading is about to end in three minutes. Um, go ahead, Ray. Would you, can we extend a few more minutes just for me to make a statement about the safety task force? I think the, the question now is, does it cost, is it two thirds or is it simple majority? Where's the constitution? Let's hold the constitution if it's really, if we want to do a point of order, let's find out if it's a simple majority, if it's a two thirds. Y'all, I mean, I'm. I'm I am going to send a minute. I have. To, yeah, well, I'm going to send it in by 20 minutes. Is that okay with everyone? And I, I know Naomi has parking usually. Oh, but I, I parked somewhere where I can go leave at 5 30 today, so we're good. <laughs> okay. um, can, we, can we do 20 minutes? Everybody would be okay with that? Yes. I will not. Armando, would you be okay? I need an advice for us. Sure. Um, okay. So let's I motion that we extend the minute by 20 minutes. I second. I okay. Anybody full agree? Say aye. Aye. Any objections? No. Any abstentions? Okay. Uh we are currently looking at the constitution. Please, so you all have a uh your device is in front of you. Looking at the constitution and seeing if this is going to work. Thank you, Penny. Oh my gosh. Yes, Penny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Penny. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I love it. Love Penny. Um, you could do it. You know, Control F probably. Thank you. I'd say doing that. Yeah, that's why I passed half my classes. <laughs> <laughs> control F. Yeah. With your PDFs? I, yes, I do. I don't even care. And like, answer to this question on the test. Oh, <laughs> you can't do that. Like, for like, when they're trying to get you to like review a certain concept, I'll be like, I'm not about to search 384 pages. Like, control out. Or Yeah. Uh, in our rules, it says the basis for determining the voting result. Uh, for a majority vote, the basic requirement for approval of an action or choice by a deliberative assembly, except where a rule provides otherwise, is a majority vote. And so, majority means more than half. Um, I'd like to hear the rule that we suggest otherwise. Well, and a clarification. I thought that because this is directly yeah. like attached to the budget. Yeah. So that that's like the budget is not holding yeah. anything from just like the like delivery. Oh, so that was my so, understanding. So, so, and then, like so, how like budding on money. Every in other. General. Every other um, resolution that we brought to the table that's involved money has been a simple majority. Like, what about voting? No, everything has been unanimous. Oh, it's been passed unanimously, but no one has raised a concern about simple majority, major majority, or, majority or, or something like that. It's engaged in a contentious moment. So it's a problem. Okay, point of order. I think the point of order. I think the whole thing and I'll just say this because I'm not I can't collaborate with people who talk smack behind my back. That's huge. How do you expect me to talk to people? Okay. Let's be honest. You know what? I this is you just said it. There has there has not no collaboration for whatever reason it is, because people talk, talk smack, but there is just no collaboration in this bill. And I think it is a little disgraceful that we're abstaining. So I think this needs to be collaborate and Warren, there needs to be more discussion and then we can do something about it because you are, are 
right now at this point, you are not willing to compromise the $15,000. Even though we're telling you just to give us a couple, like you're not willing to this collaborate with us. Just that. I'm interested okay. in knowing if it has more, more than our interpersonal disagreements on these. It issues. doesn't, for a the last bills passed unanimously. That's why it has, that's why it wasn't questioned. So the fact that this didn't pass unanimously doesn't mean it didn't pass. We need to find that out. Right. That's why we're looking at the Constitution so right now. Refer to the Constitution where it like where it passes. Where it says that this needs to be more yeah, than a simple majority. It's been my understanding that right. two thirds has typically been like the in yeah period and two thirds oh. vote. I do not believe it's in the Constitution. But I don't I think know it's in the handbook. It's in the handbook. It's in the handbook. It's in the handbook. It's two thirds. It's two thirds. The handbook says two thirds. I believe, Thank you. I believe yeah. there was a resolution passed at the beginning of our term that made the Constitution our sole binding document. And our Constitution refers to Robert's rules, basic business as simple majority. But then you would also, at the beginning of my term, we agreed that we were, that we're not part of the norms. Was there a change made to our bylaws that would suggest otherwise? You agreed to this. I did not. No. So changes to our Constitution require a two thirds majority. To move us away from using this as the way in which we meet, we will need to make a two thirds vote to change our constitution. Now that's where two thirds genuinely applies. And I know people may not like the, like how things folded out today, but this looks like it passed. And I, you know. Go I'm, ahead, Will. Quick question: Are we allowed to recast the vote? Yeah. 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 I guess it. I listen that we recast the vote. I second that. I think that that is out of order and undemocratic. All those in favor. Aye. All those in favor say aye. I'm sorry, I was trying to get ready. Aye. Aye. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Two nays? Any abstentions? Abstain. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Wrong thing. Wrong thing. This assembly voted on this resolution. This is not your man. Okay. We're going to start again. I still vote no. I changed my vote to a no. What exactly are we voting on again? The same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Yo, abstain. I'm sorry, but after all this arguing, I abstain. No. Kristen. No. What was that? Can you repeat it, McKinney? No. Well, uh, point of order, co-chairs, by motion is both timely and germane to the business at hand. It directly concerns the There's a vote. To the point of order, we are sworn to represent. According to the Roberts Rules of Order, as well as our standing rules, a seconded motion is entitled to be heard and debated. I would urge you all to enforce the procedural rules that govern this body and to not allow this motion to be thrown out like this. This is just truly a disgrace. I. Uh, I vote a yes on this resolution. Our students stay at home. Thank you for your statement. Tom. I vote yes. I abstain. John. Yes. Okay. I have three, yes, three yeses, five no's, four abstains. The resolution does not pass. Uh, there, I do recommend that, that we work on the research further, further, and there is our cooperation. Um, we are moving to the next agenda item. We're vo uh, voting for us NCB representative. Would anyone like to nominate themselves or others to this job? I nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I nominate myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can no longer legitimize an undemocratic institution that doesn't follow its own rules. I will not be party to it. Thank you for those who support the resolution. Will you collaborate in the coming week? If you honestly yeah. reach out to me, I'm sure to Okay. Or nominate someone else. Yes, 
You paid a little bit. No. 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 Okay. Yes, you do. You, you get a stipend. The, the, the other students, not the not the chairs of it. The other students oh. that we have that are on. Students are participating. Yeah. Is the position wow. just a representative or the co-chair? The co-chairs. Yeah. Co oh. yeah. I would like to respectfully withdraw my because it's it is during the semester. I mean, during the spring semester, I lead model UN and I also have mock mock trial. So I just I can't add that up to my place. Okay. I'm not hurt. But you're not accepted. I'm just kidding. I appreciate it. God, I, I, never mind. I was going to make that traumatic. Traumatic. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, okay. Well, we have two, and we need coaches. So there's Matt and there's Dave. Mm. Uh, would anybody like to object? Oh, wait. I know. I was just going to say, I, I wanted to prove that we approve. I yeah, yes. I <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. Um, point of order. Yes. yes. What's up? What are we voting on? Right? <laughs> Facts. We're voting the two the co chairs that we're going to send to the SAB committee. The SAB committee oversees the budget for all departments. They need two students from student government. But not all the departments. Oh, wait. Not the on the farm. Funded department. Yes. Yeah. So, next, next. Semester? This semester? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. So, yeah. So the responsibility, like the heavy load starts. This okay. You get prepped this semester, next semester, you go. Um, okay, we have two. Uh, everybody who agrees with this. Okay, I vote that we adjourn the meeting. All right, sorry, I understand that we are no women. Just briefly, just briefly, you guys. I um, we are going to. We have been offered the chance to have our um, active farmer training tacked on to a meeting on October twentieth, whether one side or the other. It will currently it lasts an hour and a half, and I feel that. As hard as that would be to fit into schedules, it's important to, to be part of the whole thing. And it's a little bit longer than normal because he is going to include statements and information about the police role during that mm -hmm. kind of thing to try to reduce harm or worry or fear that police are leading this, right? Because that was a concern, wasn't it? So that way we're addressing that kind of issue where people would be like, I'm not showing up to police lead it because police would lead that. So, but they're right. going to talk about what their role is so people aren't surprised by it in that case that we'd have it. So I'm going to email you guys. I don't want to do this now um, about time opportunities and what, what your kind of total feedback is on that. And if you feel that it's going to be okay to extend the meeting one way or the other and what you prefer. And so the 20th, if that even works for you too, because we need a minimum of 10 people. Right. Is this open to all students? Or just no, it's just us. Okay. And then we would set up with our friend Elise and others about a de-escalation type training because the hope is we can then hone down after we've experienced this, find the elements that we think are worth keeping to try to hopefully for them to deliver an hour long thing that would happen during orientation for our wider student body for both of these, this active harmer training and de-escalation. For a, for a bigger group rather than these small groups they currently do. So we're the test, we're going to make recommendations, and then we work with student affairs to kind of get this up. All right, so look for the email from me and let me know about that, but thank you for letting me explain it. Thank you. Okay, for questions. Just like something I just want to say real quick, so you can skip the open floor announcements real yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this real quick. Um, so Wednesday, October 18th, uh, Sasaki, which is the group that uh, is reimagining the radio campus, um, is meeting with State Cab, and we need, and we're inviting three other people uh, from just from TTAC, SGTSAC, to come join us. It is from 10 to 11, I believe. Um, and if anyone's interested, you know, it's a really great opportunity to see what this campus can be. Oh, like a future. Yeah. When is that? It's on the 18th from 10 to 11. Okay. Great, love it. Thank it's you. In all. person? Yes, it is in person. Okay. okay. Everybody's happy. Well, everybody's <laughs> happy. <laughs> I'm glad you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope that you have the meeting. Second. A second. Everybody's okay.
Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Any objections? Any objections? Not listening.